Hi, this is Beth with Divine Love Group. I'm here with my dear friend, Nanette. Um, we are here to talk to you guys today about self-empowerment. And I was hoping, Nanette, maybe you would give us a little bit of information about who you are, the kind of work you do, and why, um, in particular, I asked you to join this conversation. Well, I, I, am, I am Nanette. You said who I am. <laughs> um, and I do, I teach classes on self-empowerment. Um, I'm going to start teaching, uh, I teach channeling, and I also am going to start teaching my quantum healing methods. Um, and what else did you want? I, she asked me to do this because we're soul sisters, because we've been on this journey pretty much together from, from the beginning. And uh well, I also think what's really interesting, though, is that, okay, we have been on this, like, spiritual journey together for a long time, but what's what's interesting is is that most of the information that we'll talk about today is just kind of the basics of um, self-empowerment, you know, but it's information that we have either learned together along the way or that you've channeled and you've put into your, into your class because you learned firsthand how important it is. And there really is nothing like that direct experience to know exactly what people need to learn because there tend to be patterns in this kind of stuff. Um, there's always some really individual stuff, but there are definite patterns that follow. So it's, it's just coming from such like a, a, an authentic place of that direct experience. Yes. And I, and when I start my class, I usually talk about the life that I've come from that I feel like I've emerged from and started a new life so that people can see, you know, I'm such a different, and you even knew me at the beginning of this journey and you can say, I mean, I'm sure you've seen a 180 from, you know, little, yeah. It's not so, um, yeah, the transformation. Yeah. And the thing about it is this is something a lot of people don't want to take this class. Um, they feel like they're already there if they're on this journey but this is something people skip and then it it knocks them backwards it always tends to knock you backwards if you don't take these steps um and the truth is it's a little bit scary like you have to face yourself and that's is, that's a tough scary. thing to do but there is nothing <laughs> in this world that i can say is more worthwhile it's true i agree absolutely agree it, it is worth it. It's worth the tears. It's worth the pain that you have to, I mean, you have to face everything. Right. I mean, you might find you have to, I had to actually fly and, and see someone in person to get to the forgiveness part with them to, to let that go. I'm not going to name any, any names or anything, but it, and I didn't speak directly to this person, but being in the energy, it was, it was easier for me to find my way to it. I had tried again and again and again, and it just didn't work. So sometimes you have to do a little extra. So you, the, the thing is that you're self-empowered and you're at a point where, it, you know, you're not afraid anymore. You're not, you have self-love, you're empowered. You don't live your life around other people's standards and you are able to rise above, you know, things that are in the 3D. And I think that's important. Yeah, absolutely. And it's really the difference too, between having like that constant, you know, dull to sharp pain that's there from all of the stuff that you've held on to mm -hmm. versus facing it for a few weeks, a few months, whatever the case might be and whatever you're facing at the moment and letting it go. I mean, once you let it go, that freedom is just unreal. So, I don't know. I love it that you teach this. Um, would you be willing to share with us just a little bit of information about like what you typically do with students? So maybe people can get a taste of, you know, how they might be able to start their own journey with self-empowerment. Sure. Yes. So in the, in the first class, we talk about uh, identifying where we give our power away and I'll list off the things that I have. I'll name them off. And I tell people to write down whatever, they think is a way they give their power away. And, you know, everyone usually writes all of it down, everything I name. And then some people might have one or two other things that kind of weave into it. Um, so we do that. And then I have them for the following week, I have them um, go into these things and kind of deal with them, look at them, you know, heal them. And I'm always available to my students the whole time we do this, the whole month like 
you know, if you need to, if you need to have an appointment, just call me. Cause sometimes we have to, uh, you know, I have these methods of going back and healing things in people and, and we'll do that. We'll step through that together. Um, so the first week is like that. So what were, and, what were some of the things on your own journey that you were most surprised, you know, that you gave your power away with or like, what, are there any, any that kind of stood, stood out to you that were surprising or especially? Yeah, you know, one of the things that surprised me is, is not, I mean, family's pretty basic, but giving your power away to your kids, you're like, whoa, wait a minute. I had been giving my power away to my kids, you know? It feels like a duty, right? Like, it's like, well, I have to, that's what I, (laughs) I'm supposed to. But really, you don't have to. And, and there's ways, I mean, we talk about that in the class. So there's that. And then um, the past. I think the past was surprising because I've kind of, I'm not real nostalgic. I'm not one of those people who sits and ruminates about the past. But events in the past that have made me maybe insecure, or this or that, I've let that have my power you know what I mean Mm -hmm. it's something it's something you really have to face and look at so what what about you what did you find I think um one of the bigger ones is judgment and that comes in in so many different ways and you know both coming in and going out you know and obviously a direct result of each other but I was raised in a household where everything was, you know, what would the neighbors think? And we can't do this and we can't do that because what would people think? And, um, you know, I, I think when you go through childhood, you're either going to be a parent who says, this is how I was raised. This is how I have to raise my children. Or this is how I was raised. This felt really off to me. I'm going to make sure that doesn't happen here. So that in that instance, it was one of those things that I made sure. Um, wherever I could, (laughs) that I was not raising my children with that, what would the neighbors think kind of attitude. Mm -hmm. And then once you start doing that, you start realizing where you put your judgments, you know? And so Mm -hmm. my kids would come to me, they're the best teachers, of course, everybody knows that, (laughs) but they would come to me and just say, well, why do I have to do that? And I'll be like, because yes Uh, yes you know what you don't I'm sorry you're right you know and like sometimes the answer is yes you do but but sometimes the answer is you know what I really don't have a reason just I remember going through that yes I remember going through that because you're like it's like these ideas and paradigms are placed upon you and so you're telling your kids go do that now well why do I have to do that now right (laughs) and then you you know you yeah. You know, I know. Yeah. It's crazy. Even it's really crazy. stupid things. Like, why can't I have this for dinner? And I'm like, never mind. I know. <laughs> it's fine. <laughs> Enjoy. <laughs> yeah. That kind of stuff really, uh, really surprised me at the time, but yeah, I know. Yeah. Yeah. Right. It's a, it's a, it's a lot of, I mean, cause each thing on the list can take you through a doozy. It's not necessarily something you can do in a week, but you know, I get them started on it and then we move into the next phase. Sure. And I mean, you and I have been on this journey for a number of years, but there are still times where I get blindsided by something that, you know, I would love to say I have no judgments ever that's not true. You know, that's not true at all. You know, I'm still finding out ways that I do and they still surprise me. Um, it's, mm-hmm. it's definitely a lifelong journey. A week would be incredible, but <laughs> nope. Oh, absolutely. I know. I know. But you know, <laughs> it's good to get started on it. We do, we do. I, you know, a lot of times I find, I don't know if you find this, but I find that, um, it's like we place ourselves in a situation and we react the way we would have before. And it's like, and you get to a point in it and you're like, wait a minute, what am I doing? Mm-hmm. I know better than this. I'm better than this, you know? And so it really helps with that kind of thing. Cause otherwise you could spiral, you, just, you know, it's law of attraction is law of attraction. You just spiral, 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 spiral. So it is, it's very good. Uh, very good. Stuff to deal with. It is on your journey. 
that yeah. the realizations come faster and faster. So, you know, like the, when you learn a lesson about something, it's like, okay, it takes you this long to realize that you're going down the rabbit hole that you don't want to go down. And then the next time it takes you this long, this long, this yeah. long, and then you just stop. And then you don't even get in the damn rabbit hole. You're That's like, right. get that rabbit hole. I got, exactly. I got the snake hole over here. I don't know. Exactly. You, you choose completely new beliefs and it's absolutely beautiful. It is. It's amazing. It's empowering, shall we say. <laughs> Self-empowering. Yes. And the next thing, do you want to move on to the next yeah, thing? Yeah, yeah, let's go. At? What else do you teach? The next thing we look at is um, stories and how, and how they, what's, the, what's my word for that? Stories and how they distract you, right? deter, distract limit limit you limit limit's a good word for it how they limit you you know mm -hmm. you know and it's it's not just you know the story of your life it's not just the story i mean there's i i go into detail about this but people don't think about this the little stories say you're on social media which is one of the things i list as taking your power away and you see that someone said this and if you start this whole story in your head, oh, I think she's, I think she's talking about me. Well, you know what? She's just a bitch. I can't believe she, and you put yourself on this whole story and it could have been that their dog bit them and they're in a bad mood and they just feel like saying stuff. I mean, who cares? Who cares? Right. So, so letting stories limit you in that way, it really takes your power away. You know, we, my guide always likes to say, it's not real. It's not real. And that kind of takes you out of the story. I'll, I'll get into, you know, oh, this sucks. Really. It's not real, though. And it's not unless you want it to be real. So you get to pick if you want the story or not. So don't let it limit you. So we go into that for, you know, that class. And, and it's, it's a little easier than the first one. So you can work on both things for the following week. And um, I don't know, do you have anything to say about that story thing? No, but they go really far out. I think, um, you know, I'm, I'm, I know for a fact you go into this in your class. I just want to make sure it's like well known to people that stories are such a broad topic. Um, it's, you know, stories in your own mind, stories that come from other people. It's drama, you know, internally, mm -hmm. externally, um, memories, whether it's this life or a past life. Like there is just so many avenues you can go down with stories that can limit you, distract you and deter you from everything that you want to be. It's just yeah. so big. And I have, I have an example that I always come back to and I have to pull myself out of is when something happens that, that hits close to home, but it's, you know, it's someone else and you have to wait and see what their decision is. You put all these stories, well, they're not going to do that. They're going to do it that way. And I'm just going to be left out in the cold. And, and it's just, it's a story. And right. if you put a lot of stock into it, you can spin it into motion and it limits you. Yep. You know what I mean? So, yeah. yeah. I do. One of the, the basis, the main basis, honestly, of my spiritual practice started with Reiki and it's, um, you know, the, there's five Reiki precepts and the first one that you are kind of encouraged to take a look at, you know, and like if you were to go in order, it makes most sense to go in order of the precepts. So the first one is uh, just for today, do not worry. And it's one of the hardest things and it goes hand in hand with this because you just take yourself so far out of it. And, you know, I, whether it's like talking to my kids about a test, you know, that they're freaking out in the morning before they take a test. I'm like, you know, worry is just kind of like a, a prayer, like for a bad thing. Like you, you just have to stop, you know, it's just, it's going to be what it is at this point. Just you're wasting your time and your energy on all the wrong things. Um, it's just kind of the same. You know what I tell, I want to tell you what I tell my, my son about that. I think you'll appreciate this. It's very oneness oriented. When he, when he talks about his test, I say, you know, you wrote that test. You wrote it. So how can you not pass it? Just go take the dang test, you know? Perfect. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, and it changes the way they think, too. I mean, I, obviously, your kids and my kids were raised listening to the way we think. So it's right. not like a new concept. But yeah. Yeah. I love that. And, you know, I, I don't want to get sick. Like, then stop talking about it. Like just everywhere you go, there are stories and it goes deep. 
Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. What else? Awesome. So then the following week is a doozy. <laughs> and you and I both know this takes way longer than a week. But I go into self love, mm -hmm. which is very difficult for people. Of course, that's why it's not in the first, it's not in the beginning. We need to work through some things first. Get to your, get to your core. Self love, self trust, and surrender. <laughs> And I think even, I know that that's one of the hardest things there is like out there, but even Remember just how we used to cuss, we used to cuss at our guys. I got your surrender right here. <laughs> yeah, we were brutal, but so were they. So, you know, it takes two to tango, right? I'm sorry. Uh, Keep going. <laughs> and self-love is hard because you have to be, you know, you have to start to be able to view self-love as something so far outside of ego because they could not be more different. But, you know, at the early onset of a spiritual journey, it, it certainly feels like they go hand in hand and they, they don't, there's a huge gap no. there that, that has to be, you know. I had a huge self-worth issue when this started. I was like, why me? I don't why think me? Anybody why? Does it. Yeah. Imagine, yeah. You know, like even ego is the result <laughs> of, it is, of it, low self-worth. Yeah. Yeah. So like um, e either way you go, either if you say I'm not worthy or if you're saying I am so worthy, <laughs> it still comes back to the same thing. Not feeling worthy. You're right. Absolutely. I yes, I I totally agree. So that's, that's the third week. And then so the fourth week, we polish it off with, you know, how you can create your, your own new world. And, and now I teach channeling too, because for me, in the spiritual uh, world, I think that's one of the biggest ways people give away their power is to go to someone to channel for them. So if you learn how to channel, and I don't care what other people say. I believe everyone can be, everyone can channel. That's my opinion. I, I've never, I've never had issues teaching someone to channel. So I think everybody yeah. already does channel naturally. It's just pretty much separating the voices in your head with what they are and then allowing, allowing, your, learning your own way, trusting, you know, cause a lot of gurus will tell people all the different kinds of things. Well, not everyone can channel. Not everyone can hear. Not everyone can see. But that's all bull crap. Yep. You can do all of this. Even, I know there's people that aren't empathic. So they're like, I just don't feel it. I can't feel that energy. Yes, you can. You can learn to feel that energy. It's yep. energy. Everything's energy. There's no way you can't feel it if you start to tune it's like tuning a radio dial you know you have to tune in and um it takes work and it's it's so worth it it's so it worth is it. but you know to the point of the order of your class you have to surrender in order to allow it and i know mm -hmm. and again it's all layers right so i've i've gone through a lot of these and i i regularly start back <laughs> And go through them again. You know, I've done the surrender. I've learned how to channel and I can do these things. Yet for a long time, I would stop myself and say, I am very empathic. I feel a lot of things. I can channel lots of things on feelings and emotions, but I can't do anything technical. Like if it's like, oh, I can't do that. You know, like it was like a story I told myself for a long time and then I had to work through that and get past it. So again, it's just like layers upon layers and like it just, it's like I get to the end and then I start again at the beginning of like, you know, the entire process and go back through. Well, my lovely guide, he's, he's amazing. My guide, <laughs> let me do a test on myself because I remember, and this, guys, this is not overnight. I remember it wasn't too long ago. I got to this point where I was like, okay. Cause when I hear, I hear just like, it's a voice, my own voice in my head. Right. I don't, sometimes I hear other voices very rarely. And so I was like, okay, I'm either freaking awesome or I'm making this crap up. So I'm going to ask a few questions that I can look up. And I sat down and I asked them, and I wrote all the answers out and I looked up and I said, Oh my God, I'm fucking amazing. Look at me. I'm an amazing channeler. And you know, it's yep. just you, but you have to go through all these stages. You, 
you know, we all went through the, I don't know what the hell I'm doing. This isn't working stage, you know, hold on. I'm sorry. That's okay. I'm on my phone and it rang. Um, and, and you, you know, I, luckily I had an awesome guide and he, he just kept telling me, no, do not, do not sign up for someone to channel to you, to you. You have to go through this. You have to go through this pain. You have to go through this. Am I right? Or am I wrong? and just learn to trust what you're getting so and i was really lucky too because you know we had each other so we would call each other you remember with a list of questions of like the most random things be like all right you channel my guide and i'm channeling yours and we would check each other and we would you know we we pushed each other because it's you know it's one thing to do it for yourself and then but when you start doing it with someone else no matter how much you know like friendship and like love you have for someone, it's still harder when you put yourself in front of somebody else. There's accountability, there's responsibility. And like, you know, it just, it pushes you to that next level. So that, that was amazing too, to have like kind of a buddy system in this. I was reading that the other day. It's in one of my channel and books. <laughs> I was like, look at this. Wow. How far have we come since that? Oh my God. <laughs> That's so funny. That yeah. Is so funny. Or we would, you know, I remember, and I did wait until I felt more comfortable and, and trusted myself more, but then we would still call each other. Can you channel something for me? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. yeah. Because, you know, you want, you need the validation for a while and it's always good to have friends. I like, I give a discount if two people come to my channel in class because I like it because then there you go. You got your friend. And so when you leave my class, I know you're going to keep working together, you know, because I can't spend all my time calling everybody up and saying, okay, channel for me. I do it with some people, but I, you know, there's just times where you can't do that, but that's really smart. That's a good thing to do. Mm -hmm. Awesome. Oh, cool. And that's your class then? That's my, that's my self-empowerment class. Thank you for sharing. I hope it helps some people just like, at least, you know, get an idea of what they might need to start looking at and doing. Cause you know, the, the journey is hard. And you know, even if you've gotten a little way in, um, it's just, it's number one, it's so worth it. And number two, I think people are always further along than they give themselves credit for, mm-hmm. you know? And, um, And I think that's incredible. So if people do want to reach you for a class, um, what's the best way? Is it infinite horizons on uh, Facebook or what, what's your preference? Well, I would probably say my email, I'll give you all that stuff below. They can just click on my, my email or messenger, but I'm, I don't get on Facebook as much as I used to. I barely ever get on Facebook. So I probably would miss it, you know? Okay. So we'll put your best contact information in the description information below so people can reach out if they want to with questions or to, you know, sign up for a class. I'll put the link for the group on Facebook. They can join that because I always put my videos in there too. And I'll put my, I'll give you my YouTube channel. Okay. So we, we, we touch on a lot of self love. I, I don't know why I'm saying, well, cause I channel most of the time. So we touch on a lot of self love stuff. <laughs> the royal we <laughs> and i always say they tell me and like people are like who's they and i'm like they <laughs> yeah they what do you mean like, you don't know who they are <laughs> i know who my they are i don't know who your they are <laughs> <laughs> wonderful well thank you so much this was fun it was fun <laughs> all right <laughs> when your squeaks <laughs> all right lots of love and I hope that we do another video together soon thanks for your time Absolutely. Love you. Love you too.